Hello everyone. Trying times are upon us. Alas, the internet has been hit by lightning and I am modemless. So, what do you do when you have no internet? You film. And what better occasion to film than this? So, this is the box, um, Armed and Dangerous. I have been really excited about this box. I think this box is going to be amazing. I'm always very impressed with the Lumicrate and everything that they put into their boxes. I'm really excited to see what's in this. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh, and on a side note, guess what? I have the scissors within arm reach. You can definitely tell it's been a trying evening because I remembered to put the scissors where I could get to them easily. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this unboxing. And we have another mug, not complaining. And some paper, some paper. Ooh, what is that? It's like a little messenger bag and it's canvas and I absolutely love canvas probably to put like all of your really dangerous items in. Just trying to figure out how long the strap actually is. So it's actually long enough that if I decided to put it on like this, I could. And I actually like styling my purses like this because it's just more comfortable to carry them around. It's very plasticky on the inside, which is great because if it rains, then you don't really have to worry as much about getting your stuff wet. And if you look kind of closely here, the little wands that are on the outside of the bag, which is just adorable. So yeah, I'm definitely digging this. I like this a lot. And of course, you know, I also love yellow. So that's the first thing we got in the box. Oh my God, what is this? This is ridiculous, but I am in love. This looks like this is from Scythe. Check this bad boy out. Looks like a little like mouth like right here, but it looks like a scythe. A little saying is right here. But wow, guys, like this is ridiculous. So this is actually not a pin. This is this is really big to be a pin, but this is just very heavy duty and enamel, just like pins are. It's just very unique. I love this. It's gorgeous. Wow, that this is insane and it's amazing and I love it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the mug. A stone's throw. Oh my god, it looks like a darker shade of magic. It is a darker shade of magic. You guys have got to see this. So, we, it looks like we have Black London here and looks like we have Kel. And then it looks like we have the bridge over into Red London where we have Lila jumping through. That is so incredibly amazing. This cup is gorgeous. You guys did so well with this. Wow, I am very impressed by this. This time it is like buried in the bottom. Stone's Throw Mug is of course featuring Kel and Lila. So actually what this thing is by Scythe this is a humanity bottle opener. The scythe is a little bit more suited to, to dispatching bottle caps than it is humans. And the bag, the yellow bag, is considered a weapons bag. This is what this looks like. I love the way Illumicrate does these. I love like the whole aesthetic. Like it's just consistency and it is gorgeous. I am so happy for this. So now that I found that, it looks like I have a little thing for silverware here and it's portable. And this is actually the second thing I've gotten for silverware. Oh my God, I've been wanting one of these. It is an aluminum straw. This is actually a very complete. So we have the spoon, we have the fork, and we have the knife. And this looks like it's pretty washable too, which is great because this is going to make it perfect. Like this is stuff like that I could take like with me to theme parks and everything else, especially Disney, because right now Disney is not doing anything with plastic straws. All of their straws are paper. So this would actually be very handy. I just wish it was a tad bit longer, but I guess because of the fact like to make it more portable so that it'll fit in here, it is not, which is fine. I'm really thankful for this. So I'm wondering what fandom this came from because there is a sword with a feather on it. And then we also have a sword with wings. So let me check the little thing, but I'll show you this really quick. 
So that's what that looks like. Legendary Swords Cutlery Set. So while these are more likely to be used to cut up dinner rather than demons, we couldn't resist a nod to these Legendary Swords on our cutlery set case. That's pretty cool. And then I have something that says Ninth House. Nine for the tomb and all that was lost. What is this? These look like cards for Ninth House. Oh, okay. So like actually like this kind of shows you like all of the houses. Ninth House and all that was lost. The Keepers of Locked Tomb, the House of the Sewn Tongue and the Black Vestals. The ninth house is a house of secrets, a cloistered tomb, tended to be silent nuns and skeletal thralls, tasked with a dreadful duty by the emperor. The ninth are treated with fear and suspicion, but commanded respect. It is rare indeed to meet a scion of the ninth in polite society. And then they have this one. This is the eighth house, eighth for salvation, no matter the cost. All the houses speak words of worship, for their divine emperor, the eighth reaches depths of the devotion and approach zealotry. As the front of mortal forgiveness for sin, they take great pleasure in withholding mercy and pronouncing judgment. And then we have the seventh house. The seventh house embody the particular beauty only found in dying things. They are the rose hanging lush with decay, the vines that pull down walls of stone, the bloom of color in the terminal patient's cheeks. They are drawn out of moments of beauty, preserving people, places, and times in amber for later dissection and dictation. All right, and then we have the sixth house, six for the truth over solace and lies. In the Orbital Library, the Sixth House preserves and investigates the collective knowledge of the Empire. Masters of a thousand esoteric fields of study, they are often considered bookish, but are never to be underestimated. I pretty much think I found my house. All right, in the Fifth House, five for tradition and depths to the dead. The Fifth House is the core of the Empire, especially if you listen to them tell it. With myriad deers of tradition behind them, they have become a superpower whose gravity threatens to subsume all house that falters. The fourth house is four for fidelity facing ahead. The fourth house is the vanguard of the empire first over the line on every battlefield as the emperor wages war across the galaxy. Noble scions of the fourth often find themselves in the field well before their 16th birthdays. We have the third house and this is three for the theme of a jewel or a smile. The third house is the vanguard of threatened in the empire, setting fashion and sparkling gossip with their every move. Not only do they start rumors, they also diligently collect intelligence, both personal and political. And then the last one is the second house, which is two for the discipline heedless of trial. The second house is the militant strength of the emperor. Deeply interwoven with a cohort, they comport themselves with military rigor in all situations. Their fervent devotion to rank and other in order make them prone to taking charge, often over the protestations of other houses. Now, each one of these cards comes with a necromantic scion, cavalier primary, house colors, strengths, weaknesses, and necromantic specialties. All right. Ooh. Lovely Illumicrate Sister Apple Surprise Bath and Shower Gel. Oh, it actually smells like apples. It smells really good. So there's this little thing right here. It's a gift from Sister Apple. Careful now, you know the poisoner likes her surprises to be a little more toxic than most. That's pretty cool. So I now have the book. Oh wait, there's the coin. Okay. So, um, do I know what this coin is? I don't. I don't know what this coin is. Lila Bard! Okay, great. So there was one, I think it was last month, where it didn't tell me who was on the collectible coin, and that's if I can ever get this bag open. There we go. This is gorgeous, like Lila Bard. Yes. I love this. She just looks so furious in this coin, and I love the expression on her face, like that don't screw with me kind of look. So I think I saw the book in here, and I'm trying to contain myself because I really want to see what this looks like, because I was actually wanting to order this book anyway, and the fact that it came into a book box and I controlled myself and not ordered it. Oh my god, sprayed edges, guys, sprayed edges. Yes, oh, it's getting in the ninth. I'm so excited oh, and it's so pretty and we have black sprayed edges oh, I love that 
<laughs> it was put in here upside down. Oh, that's so cool. All right, I'll show you guys the cover in a second, but I really want to show you guys this too because this is gorgeous. It has a little skull on the side and a beautiful spine. And of course, we also have it signed by the author. It's got necromancers. <sighs> Sold. So this is what the cover looks like, which is just amazing. So I'm so excited about this. Tasman Murr's Gideon the Knife unveils a solar system of swordplay, cutthroat politics, and lesbian necromancers. Her characters leap off the page as skillfully animated as arcane re revenants. The result is an heart-pounding epic science fantasy brought up by unfriendly ossifying nuns and ancient retainers and countless skeletons Gideon is ready to abandon a life of servitude and an afterlife as a reanimated corpse she packs up her sword her shoes and her dirty magazines and prepares to launch her daring escape but her childhood nemesis won't set her free without a service. Herohawk Nan Ajimus, reverend daughter of the Ninth House and Bone Witch Extraordinaire, has been summoned into action. The Emperor has invited the heirs to re each of his loyal houses to a deadly trial of wits and skill. If Herohawk succeeds, she will become an immortal, all-powerful servant of the Resurrection. But no necromancer can ascend without their cavalier. Without Gideon's sword, Harrow will fail and the ninth house will die. Of course, some things are better left dead. There's actually a ninth house in this, but this is actually reference cards for this book right here. So I'm probably going to end up needing these. And this was actually blurred by V.E. Schwab. Unlike anything I've ever read, Murr's writing is as sharp as a broken tooth and just as unsettling. So I've been really, really excited for this. I'm so happy it came in the box. Well guys, thank you so much for joining me for my unboxing. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys like this video, hit the little like, hit subscribe, and hit the little bell icon if you guys want to receive emails every time I post. Comment in the bottom and tell me which book you got recently that you were really excited about. I am really curious, or if there's a book that you've read that really hyped you up, that gave you some energy, just comment down in, in the description below. And I will see you guys again very soon. Make sure you guys also know that I am on Instagram, Twitter, Amazon, and Goodreads. And those links are linked in the description below. And I will see you guys again very soon.